I don't know about you, but I'm going to take a mile this break, Lou. Pass those white owls, will you? Don Elson now has reached the mound and will take his warm-up throws to Thacker. Reliever is appearing in his second game. There are runners at first and second. Roseboro at second, Willie Davis at first with only one out. Two runs are in on Snyder's second home run of the season. He blasted one following Moon's drag bunt single. And standing off here ready to hit is Larry Burright, the second baseman. One in to run for Carey in the eighth inning. Elston taking a few warm-up tosses with Mo Thacker. Now he says he's all set. Dusty Boggess cleans off the plate. And here's Larry Burright, right-handed batter. Roseboro on second. Willie Davis at first base and only one out. 10 to 1, the Dodgers lead. We're in the ninth. White Owl, your host. Don Elston is set. He's the fourth Cub pitcher. Burright takes a strike right across the plate. Dug high. Last year, Burright was at Spokane, Omaha, and Atlanta. He spent most of the year at Atlanta where he hit 291. Larry was born in Roseville, Illinois. Makes his home now out in California, though. 5'11, 170 pounds throw to second base and the ball dropped out of Hubs's glove not far enough away for anybody to move up though they had Roseboro coming back into the bag and Elston tried the pickoff play but it did not work one strike on Burright Elston is set the pitch now to the Dodger second baseman swing and a pop up foul to the right Banks moving over might have a play Thacker near the seats Thacker there and Thacker caught it in foul territory and the runners remain at first and second. Two gone. Now the pitcher, Sandy Koufax, will hit. Here he comes. He ought to get a hand. He's pitched a honey of a game. He has struck out 15 batters today in eight innings. Koufax been up four times, struck out twice, fouled out, and lined to Brock, who made a great catch. Ten to one, the Dodgers lead. We're in the ninth. And Colfax batting left-handed against Don Elston, who was a member of the Dodgers at one time. Elston came up through the Cubs chain and was sent to the Dodgers when they were in Brooklyn. A ball inside at the knees. And then the Cubs got Elston back again. One ball, no strikes. Two men on, two out, ninth inning, two runs in, 10 to 1 LA. Here's the stretch and the pitch by Elston. Swing and a foul ball off here to the left and in the upper deck above third base. One and one. Ball one, strike one. Here is the stretch by Elston. The pitch, Colfax hits one foul back here. And into the grandstand. Ball one, strike two. One and two the count. Now Elston set again. Pitch to Koufax. The runner's going. Here's the throw, and he's going to be out of third. That was ball two outside, but Johnny Roseboro on the front end of a, an attempted double steal was thrown out from Thacker to Ron Santo, and it retires the side. So in the inning, L.A. picked up two runs, three hits. They left one man on. And now we go to the last half of the ninth inning with the Cubs coming to bat. It's the Dodgers 10, the Cubs 1. Why don't you light up a white owl for just a dime? It's American's mildest cigar. 
the heart of tobacco are paid for a longer time. That's why White Owl is milder by far. Why don't you light up a White Owl for better taste? See what pleasure a White Owl can give. So make haste to the taste. There's no time to waste. Mr. Light up a White Owl and live. For really mild smoking enjoyment, light up a White Owl Miniature. White Owl Miniatures are handsome little cigars with fully finished ends, milder than a big cigar, perfect for relaxing. Choice carefully aged tobacco ensures the excellent aroma and flavor of every White Owl Miniature. Just six cents straight or the handy five pack for 28 cents. Get some today. Mr. Light up a White Owl and live. Tim Harkness is now playing first in place of Wally Moon. Ron Fairley playing right field, replacing Duke Snyder. And now in the last half of the ninth, Billy Williams will lead off. He'll be followed by Will and then Elder White. Koufax has 15 strikeouts in the first eight innings today, and he's out in front 10-1. to 1. He's walked four batters, three of them in one inning. Here's the windup and the pitch to Billy Williams. He takes a strike call. Williams has struck out, doubled, and grounded to first. Sandy Koufax into the windup. Here's the pitch. Curve swung on. High fly ball. Pretty well hit. Right fielder back. It's going to be out of here. It's a home run in the right field seat. <laughs> Billy Williams just let off the last half of the ninth inning with his second home run of the year. A long, high, towering drive that dropped about two-thirds of the way up in the right field bleachers, and it's 10 to 2 in favor of L.A. Hit number five off Koufax. Now Bob Will, who has struck out, walked, and beat out an infield hit. Wind up on the pitch. Fastball, and he swings, and he misses strike one. That's the fourth home run today. Here's the pitch. Strike two. Three of them by the Dodgers, unfortunately. Tom Davis, Andy Carey, and Duke Snyder, and one of them by Billy Williams. Strike three called, a fastball, and Will is called out on strikes. Number 16 for Koufax. One out and nobody on, a run in, and here's Elder White. Up twice and struck out twice. One out in the bottom of the ninth. Here's the pitch. Swing and a high fastball, and he misses for strike one. The most strikeouts in a game in nine innings is 18. Koufax and Bob Feller share the record. Here's the pitch. Swing, strike two. And he has 16 strikeouts now. Koufax gets his sign. He's winding. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Curve, and it's inside of all. Gilliam at third, Wills at short, Burright at second, Harkness at first, Tom Davis, Willie Davis, and Ron Fairley in the outfield. The one and two pitch to Elder White. Fastball, he swings and misses, striking him out for the third time. Two strikeouts in the inning, 17 in the game for Koufax. That ties the National League day game record for strikeouts, which Dizzy Dean set against the Cubs July 30th, 1933. Here's the pitch to Thacker. Fastball, a swing and a miss. He can break the National League daytime record for strikeouts, and he can tie his own record and Feller's record for strikeouts in a game if he gets Thacker. Strike on a foul ball back into the grandstand seats, and the count is 0-2 on Thacker with two out in the bottom of the ninth. The windup, and here's the pitch. Swing and a pop-up in foul territory to the right. The first baseman is under the ball, back in fair territory, and he drops it. He dropped the ball in fair territory. That may be a hit. It is. A hit for Thacker. A high pop-up that started out in foul territory down the first baseline. The catcher, Roseboro, and Tim Harkness, the first baseman, both went after it. The wind blew it back across the foul line into fair territory. Harkness lunged, but he couldn't hang on, and Thacker gets credit for a hit. That's the sixth hit off of the left-hander Koufax. Now Morehart, a left-handed batter, is hitting for the pitcher, Don Elston. Time was called briefly. Pitch came in, but it didn't count. 
It's 10 to 2 in favor of the Dodgers. Two out on the ninth and a man on first. And Morehart is hitting up there in a pinch batting roll. Here's the delivery to Mo. And it's a ball inside, 1 0. Koufax has struck out 17, which has tied the National League daytime record for strikeouts in a nine inning game. Dizzy Dean of the Cardinals did that. Swing and a miss against the Cubs in July of 1933. Koufax's record of 18 strikeouts in a game was in a night game against the Giants. Here's ball two inside. Ball two strike one. Two and one on Marhart. Two out in the ninth and a man on first. The stretch, the pitch is made. Swing and a miss, strike two. Two and two on Marhart. Koufax within one pitch of putting his name in the record book again. Here's the 2-2 delivery. Struck him out, ball. 18 strikeouts by Sandy Koufax, which equals the all-time record for strikeouts in a nine-inning game. He just fanned more hard here to retire the side and end the game in the ninth inning. Sandy Koufax struck out 18 batters, which is a new National League record for strikeouts in a day game breaking the record set by Dizzy Dean of 17 strikeouts in a day game in 1933 against the Cubs. And he has just equaled his all-time high and a record high, and here are the totals coming across now. We're getting the totals from the PA system. Well, here are the totals, fan. Let's uh, first of all take a look at the ninth inning here. The Cubs made one run on two hits, and they left one man on base in the last half of the ninth inning. I'll have the totals in a moment right after this word from White Owl. Mr. Light Up, the White Owl, and live. You know, time is mildness in cigars, and White Owl takes plenty of it. For example, the heart of a White Owl cigar is mellowed to perfection for three and a half years. No wonder they taste so good, smoke so mild. And you can enjoy famous white owls in five popular shapes. Invincible, Panatella, Perfecto Special, Squire, and the all-new tip. Just 10 cents straight or five for 49 cents. Well, let's take a look at the totals in this game in which Sandy Koufax made history. The Dodgers scored 10 runs, 12 hits, no errors, seven men left on. The Cubs made two runs, six hits, one error, seven men left on. The winning pitcher, Sandy Koufax, his record now is three victories and one defeat. The loser, Don Cardwell, whose record now is four straight losses. He hasn't won a game yet. And the time of today's game was two hours and 43 minutes. Koufax struck out the side in the ninth. He struck out one man in the eighth. He struck out two batters in the seventh. The sixth inning is the only inning in which he did not strike out at least one cup. In the fifth inning, he struck out two. In the fourth inning, he struck out two. In the third inning, he struck out the side. In the second inning, he struck out two. And in the first inning, he struck out the side. A total of 18 strikeouts by Sandy Koufax. A new National League record for strikeouts in a day game. And he equaled his all-time record and the Major League record of 18 strikeouts in a game, set first of all in the American League by Bob Feller against Detroit in a game that he pitched in 1938. And ironically enough, Feller lost that game and an equal by Koufax in a night game against the Giants in 1959. You can sum this ball game up, Lou, very quickly in two words. Sandy Koufax, he was brilliant. No doubt about it, and uh, we want to offer our congratulations to him, Jack. It's an outstanding ball game. We had to have a great pitching performance by anybody on that mound in order to beat him today. He was uh, really great on the mound. He had everything working for him, a good fastball, straight overhand, and a good curveball with a letup a change of pace that had the hitters uh, really off balance. He had good control. He gave us one shot uh, at him in one inning when he lost control in the fifth and walked three men in that inning. But he had uh, enough cushion to work on, and it was a great performance. Today's game has been brought to you by Magicist Rug and Furniture and Carpet Cleaners, Dry Cleaners of Clothing and Draperies, and by Magicist Rug, Carpet, and Drapery Sales, always identified by the Kiss Print Mark of Quality. By Oak Park Federal Savings, the house that security built, 1001 Lake Street, Oak Park, Illinois. 
and by famous milder White Owls, America's top-selling 10-cent cigar. That's the story. The Dodgers won at 10 to 2. Koufax struck out 18. And uh, tomorrow, Johnny Padres will pitch against Glenn Hobby in the second game of the three-game series. Stay tuned now for the musical scoreboard. This is Jack Quinlan saying so long for Lou Boudreaux and myself. And this has been a presentation of WGN Sports from WGN Chicago, radio home of millions throughout mid-America. Now for your Chevrolet, car and truck, Pontiac, Oldsmobile, Buick, Cadillac, and GMC truck dealer, here are Edgar Bergen and Mortimer Snurd. Mortimer, spring is here. It's time for Mother Nature to change from winter to summer dress. Gosh, I'd better look the other way. <laughs> Do you know what the vernal equinox is? Bob, uh, could you put that question another way? I don't think so. Well, could you ask a different question? <laughs> You know the seasons, don't you? Only by reputation. <laughs> Haven't you noticed how different spring makes you feel? Oh, yeah, I sleep with more pep. Yeah. <laughs> how do you know when it's spring? Well, when Grandpa gives me sulfur and molasses and takes our car in for its spring checkup. That's right. And if you own a GM car or truck, you should take it to your GM dealers. His guardian maintenance technicians are specially trained to know your GM product best. Oh, about that. Yeah. And what's more, they have specialized tools and factory-approved parts to do the job right. Well, I'll toast to that. Or oh, join me in sulfur and molasses. 